Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And in this video, we're going to look at a test that minimizes a linear combination of the type 1 and type 2 errors. We're initially going to do this for simple versus simple hypothesis testing. That means that the null region is one point and the alternative region is one point. The parameter space omega has two points, like I said. The we're going to assume that the data follows some sort of distribution indexed by the unknown parameter. The sample space is capital S. We have three regions. They're all pairwise disjoint. And we have two constants, A and B, that are positive. And this is our test function. It takes on the values 1, gamma, and 0. It takes on a 1 if X is in region C1 which is we're going to make equivalent to this a times the joint density under the null hypothesis is less than b times the joint I'm saying density but probably should say probability mass function for x under the alternative it's gamma when they're equal and zero when this left piece is greater than the right piece now the size of the test, alpha of phi, so it's dependent upon this test, is the expected value of phi, which is 1 times the probability of the, you know being in here, times gamma, times the probability that x is in region C2, which we've seen in the previous video that that's the probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is true. So this is a type 1 error. The type 2 error is the expected value of 1 minus phi under the alternative. And so phi can take on the values 1, gamma, and 0. So 1 minus that would be 0, 1 minus gamma, and 1. So 1 minus gamma times the probability of being in this region plus 1 times the probability being in this region. And that is the probability of accepting the null hypothesis when the alternative is really true. So these are the two types of errors. And the theorem that we're going to prove in this video and then do one example is the test phi above minimizes this linear combination of the type 1 and type 2 errors amongst all other tests delta. So A times alpha of phi plus B times beta of phi is always less than this linear combination when we use delta. A times alpha of delta plus B times beta of delta. And of course A and B are positive constants. So the proof goes like this. Now first let's let it our data be discrete. Now it it's a similar proof when they're continuous, so instead of using summation signs, we use integral signs. So this linear combination, so A times alpha of phi plus B times beta of phi, is this. So how do you find alpha? So, right, the probability of rejecting. Well, since it's discrete, we can sum over all possible x's plus gamma times all possible x's where we would reject the null hypothesis under the assuming that the null is true. Right? This this would be the probability of being in region one or you know C C zero. We just sum all those values. And this is the probability of being in this region, but we have to take it times gamma and then it's B times, and then it's the probability of accepting H0 under the alternative, which is this. So we sum over region 2, all the X's in region 2, times 1 minus gamma, and then sum over all the region in uh, C0. Next, since we have, we're summing over C2, we're going to combine these pieces into one summation. 
which we put them here. Then this right here, since C0, C1, and C2 make up the whole sample space, we can take one minus the other. So this probability, remember it's probability because we're summing over the X's you know, in this column or in this uh, subspace. So it's one minus that we summed those values over C1 and C2. It's you know it's the opposite or the complement. Everything else, this one just comes down. Now here, so this one B times one is this B. Then we combine this the C's right to this. The C2's um, minus B times this and then there's a B times this right so those that cancels with this and we're left with this minus this but if we remember the when we're in region or when we're in C2 this quantity is zero and when we're in C1 this quantity is negative and, I'm, and so there, each term here adds nothing to the terms here. And I'm going to flash back for just a second. Right? So if we take this and subtract it over, then when, when, all, when the x or the same, when we're in the sample space of C1, all, then that would make that quantity 0. And when C2, then it's, I mean, less than 0, negative. And then here they would be equal and we're not in C1 so it doesn't play a part so right so all those would be zero and all these would be negative so each term we add makes it go smaller and smaller now the question is why is this a minimum right but it's specifically the way that we develop C0, C1 and C2 that's why they're negative. And so note that for all X's, so all sample space in C1, this is negative. And all X's in C2, this is zero. Right? And then if we if we think about all the, the sample space in C0, these are all positive. So if we change up our rejection region just a little bit, so if we left one X out of C1 meaning we didn't sum it in here, this got less negative, which is bigger. So it can't be a minimum. Or if, if we added some points from C0 into this rejection region, the critical region, we're adding a positive term to this. So it got less negative. So it's, it's, it's not as small as possible. So the rejection region, the way they define, makes this an absolute minimum. But let's kind of look at that. So let's, let's let delta be any other test such that it's this. Now C1 star, C2 star, C0 star are not like you know the test function phi. The you know this is C1 star is not equal to C1 in in in, in all these. So now the linear combination of the type 1 type 2 errors is this and then Alpha of delta would be, of course, this summation, you know, over C1 star and over C2 star, but we have to take it times gamma, and then beta, and then this is the uh, probability of a type 2 error right here. So then we combine the C2s together, which is here. And we also do the one minus trick for this, and that's what this is. So I skipped the step. Um, the C2s are combined, the C1 comes down. Now we, we combine the C1 stars. The C2 star, so this m minus B this cancels with B times that. Anyway, we get this piece right here. Now, not every term here, since C1 star, not every term is negative. And, and C2 star, not every term is zero, right? 
So, unless, yeah, so there's no way that this sum can be less than this sum. Absolutely no way. So that implies this linear combination of our original test phi is always less than or equal to this test. Now it's less than or equal to, and, and that's in the end of the proof. And so from here to here, you really have to think about what terms you're adding, you know, where C, it, where there are sample spaces in C0, C1, or C2, you know, whether we're adding negative terms, zero, term, you know, or positive terms. But how can they be equal? They can be, they can be equal if we, if we uh, partition C2, so this is the term where they're e that you know it's equal so such that they're disjoint but then we let one of these pieces be in c2 you know we let just one of them be c2 star and then c1 star makes up c1 and then this piece right and then when we go through this sign we're actually we're um we're adding, you know, all the negative terms and this zero term. So this one actually doesn't play, add anything. And then, of course, this one, we're, you know, all the terms would be zero. So we're not adding anything. Um, anyway, so this is a proof. And so we're going to use this one when we prove the name and Pearson limit. And this is not the this minimizing the linear combination is not quite the name and Pearson limit because in the name and Pearson limit, they make the size of the test be less than or equal to alpha. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.